perspective of a role and uh, the significance of, of the African Union, Africa's uh, number one institutional bloc, uh, bringing us to the uh, next question, which directly aligns uh, to, with your analysis, uh, dear Paseka, which I'm directing to you, uh, Lucy. We uh, 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 concentrated on the aspect of education, and now we had a, a, a broader view on another aspect from Paseka, but now to you, want to bring in the aspect of leadership yeah so I, I will say from all the analysis i've had uh, you uh, have actually uh, presented so far uh, we c attempted to see from the last uh, stuff you just said uh, dear Paseke, uh, that m the political maneuver happening in present africa is uh, reshaping uh, the uh, the policies of uh, regional blocks the ECOWAS, sadek and of course uh, Negatively, we are seeing the negative impact because of the fragmentation of the African continent and, of course, how these uh, regional blocks cannot come together as uh, in unison when uh, there is a crisis uh, rocking uh, the African continent. The case of Niger, uh, we saw the, the position of ECOWAS, which was very uh, problematic. And, of course, coming to you, Lucy, the question is, in your perspective, what do you think is the right leadership uh, needed in present Africa to, to bring a new changes suitable for the new world or that there, are, uh, there, there is actually a, a, a paradigm shift in every perspective? So there is need to redefine the leadership. So what do you think is that leadership that Africa needs in the present context? All right, thank you, Clarice. So when we talk about leadership, leadership has two important aspects that any form of leadership is supposed to meet. One is representation. Any form of leadership is supposed to represent the most dire of the needs of their own citizens or the people who are being represented. And if we look at our uh, our leadership, especially when it comes to governance in Africa, can we really say that some of the positions that our African uh, our African leaders take are a representation of their own citizens? And sometimes they tend to say no, because some of the stands they take seem to represent more of self-interest instead of national interest. And even national interest should be a representation of both the majority and the minority of the people in that particular country or in that particular sphere of influence. At the local level, it could be a county, it could be a municipal, whatever form of government exists in different African countries. That is where our first problem is. The second problem is part the second aspect of any form of effective leadership is participation. Can we actually see effective participation and involvement of Africans in some of the policies, in some of the laws, in some of the uh, bilateral agreements and multilateral agreements, if we are talking about an international relations aspect of it, that our African governments are taking? Again, I say no, because one, we tend to have some sort of ignorance in some of the aspects or rather some of the some of the uh, laws that, 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 that are there and I don't blame the citizens I blame the government because it is the work of any form of leadership to ensure that there is sufficient public participation so that there's uh, there's some sort of legitimacy and reciprocity when it comes to laws policies and agendas that governments are taking and that's where the gap is when it comes to leadership in Africa. We have governments running, uh, running their own, uh, running, running uh, governance in a way that is not representing a majority and even a minority of the people they are living. So what happens is you find a situation whereby these citizens do not accept the government. Governments tend to be illegitimate in the eyes of the citizens, but very acceptable at the global level because they are serving the interest of particular stakeholders. For example, uh, the most influential uh, uh, global leaders, uh, global uh, players in the world, this could be the West, we, we can see the US, the UK, France, and that kind of thing. And that's where we see, for example, in, uh, in countries where there are coups, we have a majority of citizens actually supporting these coups. This is not to say that citizens do not actually know 
the effect that a coup can have on its or, or, on or, on their country or even on them themselves but it is because they feel that the civilian governments that are there do not at any point represent their needs therefore there is no form of leadership that can serve their uh, their their um, their representation and their needs and they tend to look for other ways you know that's why more than more than ever before we are seeing a lot of pro citizens going on the streets and protesting the kind of governments that are there secondly the structures in our current governance system in many african countries are very colonial in their nature and they tend not to serve the, the interest of their people just recently i came to realize that as an african country uh, as kenya we have been paying pension for the british colonial masters that were there during the colonial times and simply because they were inside the kenyan system we as Kenyan uh, citizens continue to pay their pension. So that again means that when the Kenyan budget, and I know it happens in many other African countries, is high, it's because there's a certain system and structure within uh within within the within the, the governance system that is there not to serve the interest of our, of our own citizens, because if anything, the priorities of any citizen in this country, Kenya, where I am right now, is not to pay pension for colonial masters, is to go for other pressing issues such as food security. It is to go to issues such as health. But you find that it is not going there because it is diverse to issues that are not uh, of, of much a priority to, can to countries. The second thing, the sort of leadership, and I say leadership in quotes because this is not leadership you're seeing in Africa, is we have leaders who are there to increase their own power. Citizens, if you look at budgets of most African countries, the highest rates of these budgets are military. But then if you look at the nature of the needs of African countries, I think the priorities could be healthcare, education, food security, you know social protection that sort of thing but then when the largest of budgets go to things like militarization buying the most expensive of militaries in the form of protecting yourself from who i ask the question brings about the issue of a governance system or a sort of leadership that does not serve the interest of its people. And I don't tend to be naive to actually realize that my military is a very important aspect of, of a country's sovereignty, but it should not form the highest form of a country's budget, even to countries that have very small uh, populations, they never lack funds for militarization or, or or for for funding their military so that just shows one of the aspects and loopholes we have in our african leadership another thing that is ailing africa when it comes to leadership is we have something that is called tokenized representation and this is what we are getting and i think we have been seeing it more often than ever we are seeing the african union has been given a position in the g20 what does that even mean what is going to be the effect or the benefits that the African continent is going to gain from having a position in G20? Is it for just G20 to say that, yes, our membership is actually growing, we have 55 states in board, and when they need to, uh, to have a decision, they can easily buy out a continent as one instead of just buying out 55 states, because that tends to be the sort of uh, the sort of agenda that is being portrayed out there because as much as Africa is being involved even for example being invited to summits such as G7 they are invited we see our African our African leaders going there but the benefits of this form of uh, this form of uh, uh, form, forms of leadership are not being seen in transforming the continent so that um, makes us draw the conclusion that these are tokenized uh, tokenized forms of leadership and uh, representations where people are just there you're given a position to be told exactly what stance you're going to take in the interest of the people who gave you that position at the first place and 
Unfortunately, that is our current status quo as a continent. And the only way that can be reduced is if we have our own dependency. And I understand more than ever before, the country is, uh, the, the continent is very interdependent. And we saw that during COVID, the effects of one country are easy, can easily spill over to the next. However, that does not mean that as a continent or as an, any African country, we do not have a say in our own leadership, including uh including taking positions when it comes to global matters and national matters and and that kind of thing but then at the same time i will say there needs to be a lot of public awareness when it comes to uh when it comes to leadership because we have an african mentality but then this is actually really fading especially with the age of digitalization where africans African citizens more so are moving away from the perception that their fate is just decided by uh, by by bad governance. Like you can't take out a bad leader who has been there in power for over 20 years because that is the fate of your country. Your country has a history of dictatorship, citizens feeling as if they do not have control of their leadership. And I think that is fading away. And that's why we need to do more analysis to some of the changes and aspects such as, and reoccurrences such as coups that we are seeing frequently in African countries. And I think it has an aspect of the growth of public awareness and public participation and the know-how and the political awareness and the political culture that African, African citizens want to set. But I can definitely agree that there's a very great deficit when it comes to leadership that meets the needs of its citizens in Africa, unfortunately.